Luca. Thank you. This is Luca Prado, BNT, Army, Piemonte. BNT is uh, one of my favorite wearing uh, Thank you very much. We are very excited to invite Luca to be here and we appreciate the wine which man. Uh, we have a, a few things you want to know. Uh, would you like to share with us? Absolutely. <laughs> How do you know uh, when you are cut the fruit? When you harvest, already give you an idea because uh, you know you see the season and you already see that it's a, a positive or negative season. But um, to see if it's really top vintages uh, or good vintages for a barrel that uh, requires. Uh, for a year of aging, you need uh, to wait uh, uh, until uh, the second year in cask to see if it's really extraordinary vintage or not vintage. Uh, so, at least two years of the fall. What's the most difficult aspect of making wine? Uh, is a uh, different aspect. Mainly if you are artisan of wine and you do everything, you know. I come from a family business that we do everything, you know, from uh, uh, working in the vineyard, uh, working in the winery and selling the wine. Uh, the most uh, difficult aspect uh, for a winery like mine, that we try to be one of the best uh, winery of Italy, is uh, working year after year trying to keep and maintain uh, every single wine at the top of their category. So, because the expectation uh, that the customer they have uh, when they try my family wine is always very high, so you don't want them to disappoint that. So let's say it's a lot of pressure, let's say it's a stomach work. That uh, you're still working very hard. Ah, thank you. It's very professional. So we want to talk about the, how do you think the Italian wine pair with the extra food? Uh, more and more, uh, I think uh, uh, I see many. Uh, contact points. Uh, first of all, I think uh, uh, recently I had a tasting with a master of wine in Hong Kong of uh, tea and wine. And it was uh, fantastically very interesting because, uh, uh, you know, your history and your culture of tea is extraordinary and it makes uh, uh, incredible close to wine, the different region, the different origin, the different tannin uh, profile. And so it's the same for wine, our, mainly our wine, Barol, that is very tannic wine. It's a wine like has a many similar tannin to the tea. Uh, uh, I think it go well with, uh, uh, with, uh, with your food. Uh, I think one uh, uh, very interesting that probably as in Italy, as a here, has incredible versatility in terms of food pairing is the Barbera. Because Barbera in Italy, that for our culture, for Mediterranean culture, wine is part of the meal, so need to be on the table with the food. You know, when you sit at the table, on the table there must be already food, wine and bread. And on the glass of wine, normally there is a Barbera, because the Barbera is a rich, intense, but has a, behind a little bit of acidity. The acidity, when you have the food, clean your mouth from one bite to the other. So, an example with pork, it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, with the meat a little bit more rich and more uh, fat meat, it's beautiful. Uh, with a little bit of spice. Uh, the Barbera go perfectly very well. Uh, Barolo, I think it requires a little bit more gany, neither or like uh, duck, I think so, or a little bit more caramelized duck. Uh, is, uh, I think like this, he likes more his uh, uh, profile. But I think there is many, many good possibilities. So, what's make different, so different, your Barbera? Uh, with another uh, wiry. So, could you tell us the, the secret? My <laughs> secret, uh, secret is a, a funny story because uh, it can be easy to say in few words because uh, all my vineyards of Barbera, of Alba, are planted inside of the Barolo region. Barolo region is uh, this region, nine small villages. Uh, the limited ideas since 200 years and today is one uh, of 
the most expensive land in the world for one. It's only second to Grand Cru of Burgundy. So, unfortunately, it's over two million of euro for one hectare. It's crazy today because everybody they wants to make a few bottles of Baron. So, what we did, we sacrificed vineyards of uh, Barolo to replant like it was in the 1800s, but they are there. And when I did this uh, in the late 80s, it was a huge scandal in the region because all the farmers they went to my father and they said, Oh, your son is crazy, what he wants to do is going to ruin your estate because he's planting Barbera inside of a Grand Cru Barolo. Yeah, the beginning was not easy because uh, you know I, my father was so mad with me. Uh, but then uh, when the first Barbera I came out, uh, it was so much different. But not thanks to me, thanks to the land that was uh, showing the difference. Thank you. That's why this wine is very impressive. The the bottle though is uh, one of the most fascinating and educational testing I do. But the wine are always incredibly representative of their perspective, vintage and temperature. Does one year or one vintage come to mind when you think about the one of the best bottles you have made? <laughs> allora, beh, it's a very interesting question. <laughs> very interesting and tricky question. Yeah, Let's it. say, uh, beh, for sure, I think I always like to compare Barolo with uh, Pinot Noir from Burgundy. And there are many similarities between Barolo and Burgundy wine. The color are very similar to the Pinot Noir, the tanning prospect is similar to the Pinot Noir. And as a Burgundy, the difference, like you said, vintage after vintage is very important. And it must be like this because this is a, the wine is alive, you know? And it's not boring <laughs> for this reason. Uh, when I think about vintages, uh, this year for me was uh, 25 uh, harvest. I think for me it was a big uh, anniversary of this uh, harvest that just passed. And uh, let me think a little bit. And so, but when I make wine, uh, I think about uh, the oldest vintages, 82. 82 Barolo was extraordinary. Was that it? My goal in the next 10 years is uh, to drink uh, more 82 that I can find. And every 82 that I can find on the wine list, I will drink. Coming to the recent vintages, uh, I think uh, the 01 was a uh, killer. Uh, 2006 was unbelievable vintages. I think we just released uh, one of our very rare wine called Villero, that is a reserva uh, that in 42 years uh, we only made uh, nine times. We only make when everything is perfect. And 2006 was one of these vintages. Uh, for the recent vintages, 08, 09, 010, uh, so far are very good, uh, but I will, uh, would like to wait uh, at least uh, five or six years to see if they are going to be uh, you know, among uh, these three. <laughs> Can you just give me a picture uh, of the, the picture of the Barolo? Picture of the Barolo? I, like I was saying, I just uh, received a very interesting article from uh, the director of Sotheby, the auction house, and uh, the, art, the, the title of the article was uh, "Reading Tea Leaves on Auction One," and it was very, very interesting. And uh, I, I say this article because it doesn't come from my mouth, but comes from uh, other mouth. But uh, I think it's very important. He was saying that uh, this guy started uh, to work in auction uh, in 2010-2011 and at the time uh, Bordeaux was uh, only Bordeaux and he said uh, that in the last uh, few months, in the last few years, the geopolitics of wine and the wine is changing a lot, the wine in the auction, so the price of the wine and he said uh, for sure the future, if I, he said, if I have to bet the future, for sure the Grand Cru Classé from Bordeaux, they always will be there. And, uh, but the other regular, you know, overpriced, they are going down. And instead, the three regions that they are going to be very well known in the future, and they are growing a lot. 
One is Burgundy, Côte d'Huron, and Baron. Why? Because there are three regions that really represent, as you said, the soil and the soul of the region where they come from. More and more customers, they become knowledgeable. More and more customers, they wanted to learn more, they wanted to see more. And these three appellations, I don't say Bordeaux is not good, Bordeaux is fantastic, but these three are more for the little bit more upscale, you know? Why not that they give you more? They have more three-dimensional aspect. So this, this is a good and bad because uh, uh, unfortunately for a small estate like Vietti that we already have much more demand than our production, it will be more difficult. But for sure I will give uh, to my kids, uh, to the future generation, uh, uh, something to have fun. That's why I told you, friends, the Vietti's wine is very, very old. <laughs> Grazie mille, thank you. We want to know them. What's the best time of the year to visit the hotel? Ah, if you come during the harvest time, you are very welcome to come, but you come to work with me. <laughs> to work, to help me to do the harvest. Uh, let's say the best period, let's say, or is the spring time, I like very much. Uh, everything is green, it's blooming, but the best period absolutely is November, because uh, my region, Pimo, that uh, before to be Italy was the ancient Savoy. It's a region where uh, it's really a destination for gourmet. It's not only a beautiful landscape, because if you see on the web, uh, there are all the rolling hills uh, with vineyard around, uh, with medieval castle. It's really very, very nice. But there is a big uh, culture of food uh, and wine, absolutely. But food uh, is uh, where there is the highest concentration of uh, star Michelin, top restaurant in every of eating, of eating. And uh, November is the best uh, moment for uh, the, the seasonal product in my region. Plus uh, you will find uh, white truffles that comes from Alba. It is another very famous uh, product. And so I think it's the best uh, season to come uh, to see the landscape, uh, to enjoy wine with the uh, local food. And some white truffles that is not bad. That's Join us on next Saturday, December 21st, in here, as we welcome when <laughs> he just disappeared. I went to Gogo Meme restaurant. He will bring uh, the current release, including Moscato Asi, Anis, uh, Dochato, Barbera, Barbaresco, and Paloloso. So, enjoy your wine. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao. See you soon. See you soon. Ciao. Thank you. Salute.